What they're doing is actually measuring the center of the bladder and they've made a mark on the center of their bladder. And in a real live installation for this, you would actually push your camera down, put it right on where you want your uh, brake to be or where you want to center that repair. And then you're going to put a piece of tape on the back of your camera, pull it out of the pipe, and you're going to measure the length from the actual tape mark on your coax cable to the actual lens of your camera where the center of that brake was. From there, you can actually take that measurement, measure from the center of your bladder, measure all the way back on the air hose and push rod that you're using to install this with and put another piece of tape on that so that when you're pushing this in place you can ensure that it's going to line up right where you want it to go. With this installation we're actually using five foot push rods. Uh, these push rods are nice because they're very stiff yet very flexible. They are also nice because they are hollow. We can actually use these as our air hose. Uh, we offer these in a 5 foot and a 10 foot length and we also offer 25 foot sections as well. Like I said before with, the re with this kit, it's going to offer you a two part sodium silicate resin. This resin is nice because you're not going to need a drill or a power source to, to put this repair in place. The resin is actually going to come in a bag separated by a, a, or a, separated by a cord on top. When we're ready to mix this resin, we're simply going to pull the cord out. It's going to open the bag up and allow it to be one solid bag now. And all you have to do is shake the bag to mix the resin. Once it's thoroughly mixed, we're just going to cut it with scissors and pour the resin out onto the fiberglass mat. Each one of these kits actually comes with your fiberglass pre-cut to the size of kit that you ordered. The kit that we're using today is a 6 inch by 2 foot kit. The fiberglass is actually going to be cut twice as long as the actual repair because once you wet this out, it's going to be folded back in half to double the thickness of the actual repair. Our fiberglass mat has a felt backing and then an actual fiberglass surface on the front. The felt backing is to actually absorb the chemical. Fiberglass is not going to absorb resin. Also in the kit, we're going to have a pre-pack kit. In the pre-pack, it's going to have everything from latex gloves to ground protection to help protect the area that you are wetting out on. It's going to include the instructions. It'll have permalube, which is actually a food grade silicone to help protect your bladder from the heat that the resin gives off. And it's also going to allow any resin that squeezes out past the end of the repair to not bond to the actual carrier protector or bladder when you go to pull it out. It's going to have these nice fancy Low pressure zip ties what we're going to use to actually affix the, the liner to our bladder. These aren't standard zip ties that you can go to the store and buy. These are actually designed to pop at a very, very low PSI. I'm going to start the next goal. Yeah, go ahead. I need that spreader. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Doug's going to get his spreader out and open up his pre-pack and ensure that he's got everything laid out and ready to go. They've already pre-prepped their bladder, but typically in a kit, you would, this would come with your carrier protector. The carrier protectors are actually sized to match whatever size pipe that you're lining. This is because a lot of the bladders, or packers is what we call them, that we use in our, in our uh, industry here are multi-sized, meaning that they can inflate to several different pipe sizes. This bladder here is about a two inch deflated diameter. When you inflate this, it will go up to four, past four, and all the way up to six inches. So say if I was using this bladder to do a repair in a four inch pipe, I'm not gonna want this to over expand to six inches and blow my clay pipe apart. That's where the carrier protector comes into play. It's actually gonna stop that bladder from over expanding and it's gonna keep it to the diameter you want it at. It's also gonna help to act as a heat barrier and as an actual physical barrier to the resin coming in contact with the rubber on the bladder. Rubber is a porous substance when you inflate a bladder and if you pour resin on it and then deflate it, it will draw the resin back down into those pores when it's deflated and over time it will ruin your bladder. These carrier protectors will ensure a long life on your packer and help you get multiple, multiple uses out of them. You can see now that Doug has already pulled the cord out of the resin and now he's simply going to take the bag and go back and forth to mix it up. He's going to know that he's thoroughly mixed once he gets an even, solid consistency and color. Like brown, baby. Right now he still has streaks of brown running through his, his resin. So he's going to keep going back and forth 
until he gets one solid color. Once he's ready to go ahead and pour out and saturate his mat, he's simply going to draw all the resin down to the bottom of the bag, cut the top, and then pour it right out. Now you can see to wet this out, he has already gone ahead and laid out his mat with the shiny side up. That's the fiberglass side. Once he's going to spread resin out on that, he's just going to flip it over and actually thoroughly wet out the back side, which will draw the resin in. RJ is a professional bag opener. <laughs> now you can see that Doug has just eyeballed this and just poured out a liberal amount of resin onto the mat. If he didn't pour enough, it's okay. He's got plenty of time. He can go ahead and pour more if he needs it. The way this resin reacts is that when it's in mass, it's actually going to generate more heat and react faster. What I mean by that is when it's in more concentration or you have more actual physical weight of the resin sitting on top of itself, it'll generate more heat. But as soon as Doug pours that resin out onto the mat, mat and starts spreading it back down, unlike the epoxy, this res resin will actually cool back down. The only way you can get that with the epoxy is if you actually introduce a uh, ice bath or some sort of environmental change to it. Now Doug's flipped his mat over. He's going to pour out the remainder of the resin on the actual felt backing on the back of the mat. He's going to spread this out to evenly saturated out and ensure that he gets a solid wet out surface. This is a very simple process and it does not require any more than about two people to install these. These kits and systems are great for, uh, for your everyday plumber. Um, they're very easy and don't require a lot of equipment, so you can literally keep one of these bladders on a shelf in your van, on your service van, uh, and, and throw one or two kits, maybe a four inch and a six inch kit in there. That way when you're out on a root cleaning job or out clearing a pipe and you actually put your camera in, you can actually show your customer or end user the problem area in that section of pipe. And if that section is, say, a broken joint or maybe one offset joint, or maybe even it's a, it's a problem right at a transition where it goes from four to six, you don't always have to sell a full length liner. You could just sell them a two foot patch. You can see now that Doug has gone ahead and folded over his mat and he's included a one inch overlap in the middle. He's positioned it so that the center of the repair is right in the center of the uh, bladder. And now he's going to roll this up like a burrito onto the bladder. Once it's fully rolled up, they're going to take the low pressure zip ties and affix them around the bladder. Once they have gotten all the low pressure zip ties in place, they're simply going to take some side cutters or some snips and come behind and cut off the excess of the material. Does anybody have any questions about this so far? Yes, sir. Correct, a transition. In a four to six, you would use the larger of the two sizes. And you have to be careful that you aren't going to put too much PSI on it, but that bladder will inflate unevenly, which is good, so that way it will, go, it will inflate all the way to the six first, and then it'll taper back down. We, we have done transitional uh, spot repairs with this system with uh, a lot of success. Now they're going to push this in place. They're going to attach their push rod, which like I said before, if this was a real live application, they would actually have a mark on the back of their push rod, whether it be one or two of these hooked together. So they would know when to stop pushing this in place. Once you're centered over your bladder, you're going to use your regulator here on your air bottle to inflate this. It's very easy to actually inflate these because all you have to do is just spike the regulator. You're going to watch your gauge and as soon as you see that needle bounce, 
you know you've made contact with your pipe wall. Once you've made contact with the pipe wall, you're going to add a couple pounds to, to ensure that it's nice and tight fitting. And then you're going to let this sit for a period of about an hour and a half. After an hour and a half is up, you're going to deflate by simply unhooking the air hose here, let the bladder drain out on its own, and then you pull this right back out of the pipe. When we hooked up our carrier protector to the bladder, we actually only strapped the front edge of that carrier protector to the bladder. The reason for that being is that when this resin cures, it's going to be curing under a lot of pressure and a lot of heat, and it could create a, a slight mechanical bond between that clear carrier protector and the liner itself while it's curing. By only affixing the front edge of that to the bladder, when we pull the bladder, it's going to actually cause that carrier protector to peel away or reinvert out of the pipe, making it very easy for us to pull this bladder back out of the pipe.